Hello, all you Martians out there. It's your turn, fix foot, soul, a bit of that old world flavor. You're tuned to Radio Nostalgia from Mars. Breathe easy, kick back, and reminisce. Take my hand, explain it.
with Take My Hand, her sublime take on our wonderful project called Humanity. Beautiful. Plenty more to come into Soul Show, a show packed with stories and music to remind ourselves of where we are and how far we've come. Our first caller for the show calls it like it is and was a hard-hitting look back at the last days on Earth from the perspective of a shrewd businessman and loving father. Stories. Memories, the good old days, original sources, authentic tales, hope, inspiration, drama. I worked in oil, brokering gasoline to be exact. It's a strange business, uh, probably not like you would actually imagine it to be. My day started something like this. I check Reuters and my sheets, see if there's been a change in the fundamentals. See if the spread's up or down. And then when the clock strikes, go, I'm on the phone. I could be calling some commercial shop in Bumble, Kansas, where little old Sue loves to know how my daughter's doing. Or I could be trying to get into the head of a powerful Russian who knows the world wants his phone number. That's when the psychology kicks in, and I go to work. If they pick up the phone, they're mine. That's the game. I started when I was uh, 29, 30. My boss was a coked up, permatanned moron who was wasted by lunch. More money than sense. Screaming at waiters, because, uh, I don't know. You don't drink gin out of a glass like that. And Caesar salad is supposed to have eight pieces. Eight pieces of chicken, you stunted fool. Stunted fool was his favorite insult. This comes from a guy who was five foot and nothing. That was pretty much my life, 24 7. I traveled a lot. Meeting clients all over the world. The Amazon, the Gulf, Siberia, Central Asia, the States, Singapore, everywhere. Looking back, I can't claim that I ever would recommend that life, nor can I claim that I was ever really happy doing it. But it was fun. I mean, talk about your share of moments. There was this one girl, some strange mix of Algiers and Paris, with some sprinkle of Havana, a dancer, naturally. So pretty. She'd turn a priest's head or give a nod of Sometimes I wonder what happened to her. But we all had the same feeling. This can't last. And sure enough, we were right. First, you couldn't drink the water. Then you couldn't eat the crops. And pretty soon, we wouldn't be able to breathe the air. I remember looking at Emmy and wondering what kind of a future would she have. So I decided to do something about it. The Mars project was plan B for planet Earth, which was most evidently f The family and I had already put down roots in Tesla City by the time the great catastrophe really hit. The corporation knew my contacts in the world of drilling and refining would be useful. So I adapted my skills to something more practical. Now we are all that keeps this little planet running. Mining those Martian chemicals for the battery banks. Martian cement for the buildings. My pure little Emma has a future. When somebody sits down and writes this all up for the history books, it might just be men like me they'll be hailing as heroes. It's men like me who saved humanity. Men like me who took us further than we ever dreamt possible. Radio nostalgia from Mars. Wow, some pretty heavy stuff. 
Reminds us that all kinds made it up here to Mars, but we're all in it together now and remain creatures of the world. You're tight beam to radio nostalgia from Mars. Music for the lost days of Earth. takes us back. Stefan Milenkovic pining for blue skies, us musing on the games we play. Just a reminder that until further notice, there is a moratorium on all team leaders playing card and board games with their teams, following an incident over a game of Monopoly in Section C. 
or senior section team leaders will convene for emergency counselling and anger management courses. Until then, there will be no intersectional board game tournaments and no games with groups larger than four people at a time per team. In the interim, teams are encouraged to take advantage of the half ration special on OMAS, a delicious and relaxing drink that takes the edge off of everything. Our next caller, Yamil, takes us into her world of food, smells, sensuality, blue skies, and sings us a personal song to remember. Histoire, mémoire, le bon vieux temps, source originale, fable authentique, espoir, inspiration, drame, musique, radio nostalgie de Mars. I have nightmares. I'm happy to be alive, but I knew many who deserved to live more than I did. But this is a radio program about nostalgia, not guilt. I've been nostalgic since I was 20, when I left Havana. In Europe, I felt different. Each country has a smell. Mars doesn't. Where I come from, the smell of the ocean, mango, bananas, coconut, mama's food, ropa vieja de la abuelita, el con gris, la yuca con mojito, the most beautiful sun of Malecón, the smell of my street when the rain falls, all of that make me into the person I am. So, when I left, I grew stronger. I experienced the world, but forever stayed incomplete. So, now I'm double nostalgic. We were full of life, laughing on warm nights under blue sky, touching each other. The air filled with the smell of sweat from dancing with a orchestra Aragon playing from an apartment. Now, the only way I can feel this scent is by singing. Como fue? No sé decirte Como fue? No sé explicarme qué pasó Pero de ti me enamoré Fue una luz Que iluminó Todo mi ser Tu risa Como manantial Llenó mi vida De inquietud Fueron tus ojos o tu boca fueron tus manos o tu voz fue a lo mejor la impaciencia de tanto esperar tu llegada más no sé no sé decirte cómo fue no sé explicarme qué pasó, pero de ti me enamoré. Слушайте, Radio Nostalgia sa Marsa. Thank you, Young Neil. What a wonderful story. Reminds us that life is about so much more than just base survival. Well, living in space has always been challenging. And here's a song that pokes a little fun at living in cramped quarters. Needs no introduction. All you, all you want. It's a classic. Take a moment. Relax. And remember. With Radio Nostalgia from Mars. A Russian and an American work together in space. A very different sight from the Cold War arms race, whether Kubrick or Tarkovsky, Solaris or 2001, Melville or Dostoevsky, you sing in old Jack London, you astronauts, argued about art, fell 
There's an international relations to astronauts. Америка убила иракцев и белочей арены и лимуны. Она убила корейцев и вьетнамцев, распространяя демократию. Don't get me started on Stalin and your talent to suffer on the zones, my friend. Your history is long. You also inflict its scars. Two astronauts argued about art. That is an international relations. Two astronauts Two tongues, but still for hours they talk. The same oxygen in their lungs, the same thrill on their space wall. Stari dobri dan. Radio nostalgia sa mas. Amateur Chende and arguably the first interplanetary hit, Two Astronauts, an anthem to the great evacuation, and certainly one of our most popular requests. Speaking of requests, please follow habitat protocols for sanitation. No liquids other than bodily in the main bin, including pee. Some of you don't like it. But all water is recycled, so pee into the funnel installed next to your toilet, please. Speaking of pee and poop, we recently welcomed our first official little Martian to the colony, and our next caller, Sophia, tells us what it's like to be a new mother on Mars. <laughs> I'm so happy we moved to Mars. It was a project I funded from the very beginning. I knew it had potential and I trusted the amazing team working on it. As angel investors, my husband and I got early placements in the Ark ship. I'm so grateful for the opportunity to further human survival in our solar system. 
Speaking of the human project, I have some exciting news. Just a week ago, we welcomed our baby boy into the world. Words cannot express how overjoyed we are at welcoming little Maxim. Putting him to bed reminds me of my parents. From our window here in Tesla City, we can see the earth, tiny enough to fit in Maxim's hand. It pains me that my child might never experience the beauty of my home in the Hamptons. The nature, coastline, the old lighthouse, and the food, the houses of our friends, our evening parties, full of life compared to this barren, rugged terrain. I send my little Martian to sleep with a lullaby my mother sang for me. Thanks to these songs, I'm able to retain, at least on a rudimentary level, my mother tongue. Thank you, Sophia, for that uplifting news and beautiful song. Life always finds a way. Just as precious as a new life is the water that sustains it. You may have noticed that it doesn't rain here on Mars. So another friendly reminder that showers are strictly limited to 30 seconds each, with no exceptions. Corporate is looking into extending this time frame, but is meeting resistance from Section BC who want lab rat urine to be excluded from the water recycling program, which would actually reduce allocated shower times to 27 seconds. Want to say in this? Join our sectional weekly meetings and vote while sipping on a relaxing tube of OMAS. Feels good? As it should. Radio nostalgia from Mars. Don't 
quickly indeed another blast from the past reminding us to savor each moment as it flies by speaking of savoring things the health and well-being department would like us to remind you that the popping and fizzing noise your dried food makes when you're adding water is perfectly normal and does not mean it has gone off or is contaminated The Health and Wellbeing Department would also like to take this moment to remind you to take your bone density pills twice a week now, as it was discovered the original dose is off by a factor of two. Right, on with the show. Music and dancing have always been a mainstay of stress relief and letting go. Our next caller Merva recalls her teenage clubbing days with vivid memories of awkward first kisses and a life-altering club experience invoking a philosophical epiphany. Stories, memories, the good old days, original sources, authentic tales, hope, inspiration, drama, radiant nostalgia from Mars. So, when I was a kid in Vienna, in high school, we used to learn all the German poets, like Best Friends, Goethe and Schiller. But the first poet that actually spoke to me was Heinrich Heine. I knew a couple of Heine's poems by heart that are now buried somewhere deep in my mind. But one passage about burning books stuck with me. Yes, even till today. So just to fast forward to college, just a couple of years before the great catastrophe, I was walking around Berlin with a group of friends coming from a house party. Pfui, I, yeah, I still remember that apartment smelling of potatoes. Yes, because we always made pommes and drank schnapps before heading out, yeah. And after that, I remember passing by Alexanderplatz on that very, very hot night. And next to me was a guy I liked. We kissed before, but I can't say I really remember that. Probably from all the drinking, or maybe he was just a bad kisser. But I can still feel this sticky, sweaty, and very ambivalent feeling of us holding hands. Yeah, anyways, we popped some pills and entered our techno church that, well, now when I think back, I visited more often than my college. <laughs> and I remember the beat in my chest and all these young bodies moving in this industrial space. I used to love dancing and counting beats in techno songs, but one song was very strange. It just went repetition, 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 and then this female vocal would creep out of nowhere. And then suddenly I felt very dizzy, so I sat on the ground and held my knees closely to my chest. It was some sort of like, you know, like protective instinct. I was like an animal. And I felt cold sweat dripping down my neck. Ugh. And I'm sure my guy thought I was completely crazy. And then out of nowhere, the Heine lines clearly came to me. I sat there motionless, surrounded by the ugly, hypnotic, ugh, delirious atmosphere. And no effort to recall Heine's lines. They were just there, planted in my head. Bilder düstere Zeiten drüben heran und der Prophet, der eine neue Apokalypse schreiben wollte, musste ganz neue Bestien erfinden. Und zwar so erschreckliche, dass die älteren johannischen Tiersymbole dagegen nur sanfte Täubchen und Amoretten wären. Die Güter verhüllen ihr Anlitz aus Mitleid 
mit den Menschenkindern, ihren langjährigen Pfleglingen und vielleicht zugleich auch aus Besorgnis über das eigene Schicksal. And yeah, two years later, I ended up here on Mars. It does bring back memories of university days and sweaty club nights. Earthly hedonism at its finest. For the record, corporate does not endorse or advocate the use of psychedelic drugs and reminds you, dear listeners, that Class A drugs are just as illegal here on Mars as they were on Earth. Okay, disclaimer out of the way, we actually have a surprise for Mirva. We tracked down that weird song in her head and dug it out of the archives for all to hear. Grab a tube of Omas and enjoy the ride while sipping on pure calm. The deepest tunes, the warmest memories. Radio nostalgia from Mars. Repetition, 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 So 
You're listening to Radio Nostalgia from Mars. Well, what can I say? No wonder that song got into her head. But with a little help from some friends, she pulled through. Another thing that can get into your head is living conditions here on Mars. Life up here on Mars can get a bit overwhelming at times, so along with a soothing OMAS drink, no stress, no fuss, it bears mentioning that wellness counseling is mandatory for all team members, regardless of rank or tenure. The wellness sessions are completely confidential and anonymous, but do remember that all conversations are monitored and recorded for security reasons, and you must have your ID badge and sectional access pass visible at all times. Okay, time for another story. Our last caller for Tussol Show is Francesco, who tells a haunting tale of his last days on Earth as the great catastrophe kicked into high gear. Stories, memories, the good old days, original sources, authentic tales, hope, inspiration, drama, radio nostalgia from Mars. It was an extremely humid summer. My parents would not let me out because of the floods in Italy. My father went outside and was working in the greenhouse on the vineyard and my mother was a doctor. She read Italian fairy tales to me. I was very small, but I remember many days when our neighbors would gather at our house and make plans. It rained heavily at night. They would only say to me, powerful people want to take my great-great-grandfather's land. But one image stuck in my memory. It was daybreak. I woke up and I could faintly hear in the dark. Oh, Gorizia, to say maledetta. Only later I understood the history behind this song. Outside I saw men and women, my father and mother, rifles in their hands. My father was crying and singing. I was at the door of the house. My mother turned, smiled at me, but it was a mysterious, confident smile. Cara moglier che tu non mi senti, raccomando ai compagni vicini di tenermi da conto i bambini che io muoio col suo nome nel cuore oh, come on. of course I had no idea where they were buried traditori signori ufficiali La guerra l'avete voluta, scannatori di carne venduta e rovina della gioventù. Twelve years later, the Mars mission. In a way, the people who killed my parents found me in Italy and recruited me. Saved me, you can say. It is ironic, no? My parents fought for freedom. I cannot say I'm free here on Mars. They took my semen this morning for the population increase program. Here, on Mars, Often in the middle of the night, I hear my parents sing. Oh, Gorizia, tu sei maledetta Per ogni cuore che sente coscienza Dolorosa 
ci fu la partenza e il ritorno per molti non fu o oh, gorizia tu sei maledetta per ogni cuore che sente coscienza dolorosa ci fu la partenza e il ritorno per molti non fu Radio Nostalgia from Mars.
deepest tunes, the warmest memories. Radio nostalgia from Mars. Well, that brings us to the end of the show. It's been a real journey. Music, stories, and memories. Radio nostalgia from Mars has it all. If you want to be involved with RNFM, have a story to tell, a memory to share, contact us via the usual internet channels and leave a short message outlining your contribution. Once your story idea is vetted and greenlit by corporate, we'll track you down to organize a time to record you. Please note that not all stories are accepted and we are not permitted to give out criteria, so stories and ideas are submitted at your own risk. A big thank you to our show sponsor, OMAS, the no-stress, no-fuss drink for the ultra-elite. And a big thank you to Corporate for allocating us this precious time and their resources on this tight beam to you. I hope you've enjoyed the show. It's been a pleasure to take your hand. We're playing out with Crowded In My Mind, a song that always reminds us that no matter how cramped and stuffy we feel, in the end, there is always a breath of fresh air in memories of blue skies. Musica e stari dobri dana. Radio nostalgia samas. Crowds in Berlin, crowds in Tokyo, Paris. <laughs>
for next transmission. Please stand by for next transmission in 30 seconds. Please stand by for next transmission in 20 seconds. In 15 seconds. In 10 seconds. In 5 seconds. In 1 second. Yeah, I'd say all you Martians out there, welcome to another edition of Radio Nostalgia from Mars. Plenty of great stuff coming your way onto Soul Show. You know, a bit of that old Terran flavor. Some more stories from our beloved callers and news and views from around our base out here among the stars. Like I said, your tight beam to radio nostalgia from Mars. Breathe easy, kick back, and reminisce.
with the club classic Proto 2021, a long lost Earth Day anthem recently discovered in the archives here on Mars. That should take most of us back to the days when Mars was nothing but an evening star in the sky and large social gatherings were still normal and carefree. Speaking of carefree, look out for three new OMAS flavors, pink, green and yellow. Pure calm in a tube. Right, moving on. As always, we've collected some stories from our beloved callers. And up first is a young man who might just be the luckiest one of us all. События, воспоминания, старые добрые времена, оригинальные источники, подлинные истории, надежда, вдохновение, драма, радионостальгия с Марса. I nearly missed the book to Mars. I mean, the rumors about something big happening in Alphaville have been floating for a few years, and of course it was impossible to separate fact from fiction. At that time, I barely made it through insurgent territory to this floating ghetto about an hour away from Alphaville by a motorboat. I won't go into detail, but the crew I ran with bribed an outpost guard to go have a really long piss, where we used his comms to access their infranet. Their information turned out just as distorted as ours, but we found one channel that changed everything. Some bright spark in Alphaville had made color-coded spreadsheets of shipping data a monkey could understand. Imports into Alphaville were off the charts, while exports had zeroed out completely. I mean, nothing was coming out, even on the black market, which incidentally was fully accounted for, meaning it had to be sanctioned all along. So we knew something was up. Of course, Alphaville media spun this situation heavily. The insurgents were blamed for everything, disrupting supply lines, stealing aid and so on. But it was really Alphaville stockpiling on a scale unseen in modern history. What tipped us off that they were planning to leave Earth is what they were stockpiling. Fuel, fuel, fuel. Specifically, dinitrogen, tetroxide and hydrazine. Old school. But their chemicals used as rocket fuel. They're easy to store, but they're highly toxic and require careful handling, which explained another gruesome discovery. The covert shipping and dumping of bodies. A lot of bodies. There were so many that some of those bodies had started washing up in our neighborhood. So toxic, even scavengers stayed away. Coincidentally, it suddenly became much easier to get a multi-day work pass into Alphaville. We were so hungry and focused on other resources we didn't make the connection. We assumed the workers were skipping on the visa. In fact, I was planning to do the exact same thing. So actually, I lucked out. I'm a small guy, and Alpha was so strapped for labor at that point that I was given an unscreened pass and ended up in heavy labor, moving enormous containers into storage with mechanical suits. But it didn't fit them. So I was just given a scanner instead and told to scan serial numbers all day. It was very hard to breathe, so I traded for a spare hazmat suit from a drunk guard and put it on. Not unusual at all to hang out all day in a hazy. Technically just walking outside required one those days. That's what saved me, twice. Whew. I mean hindsight is 2020, but those containers were the rocket fuel. And in no way was it being stored and transported safely. All those guys died, weathered to skin and bone, nasty stuff. Again, it was all hidden in plain sight. Hell, we were all skin and bone at that point. We just assumed everyone was starving. I only got onto one of the last ships up to Mars because I was in a hazmat suit and holding that scanner, which I think had stopped working within the first days of my assignment. I never told anyone and no one ever asked. I guess I was confused with security or something. All I remember is being yelled at, rushed into a shuttle, and then everyone patting me on the back and calling me Scully. The name embedded in the biometrics of the suit. I never saw my crew or the sky again. Wow, what amazing luck to be in the right suit at the right time. Just goes to show, dressing appropriately for the job can really go a long way. Speaking of dressing appropriately, here's a Mars fun fact. 
Despite an average temperature of well below minus 80 degrees centigrade, if you step outside without a suit on, you won't freeze to death, your blood will boil. That's due to the low atmospheric pressure outside. So please maintain your suits properly and follow decontamination protocols strictly at all times when returning from extra habitat activities. No suit, no life as we say. Radio nostalgia from Mars. Right, how about a 21st century love song remixed for the 22nd? Who's watching who? Espionage or true love? I guess we'll never really be quite sure. Love song, an oldie, but a goodie. Sophie Jazz reminding us that love remains as complicated as ever, despite our patented matchmaking algorithms and profiling. On the subject of complications, the Mars time coordinators asked me to mention that even though a Mars soul is 40 minutes longer than a day on Earth, you do not have to manually add 40 minutes to your clock every soul. We are officially on Mars clock time, so every second, minute, and hour across all systems and devices are 2.7% longer by design. 
I know it's confusing at first, but just keep time as usual. For all practical purposes, we live a 24-hour day up here, just like we did on Earth. Okay, on with the show. Well, we've had a few requests for some classical music, and boy do I have a double treat for all the classical and vinyl lovers out there. A genuine record, playing with an actual record player, on loan from a dedicated RNFA fan. So grab a tube of OMS, sit back, and enjoy some chill, more classical vibes, with that warm vinyl sound, right here, on the dearest album. Take a moment, relax, and remember with Radio Nostalgia.
Muzika iz starih dobrih dana. Radio Nostalgija sa nas. From neoclassical to electronica, we really do have it all here on Radio Nostalgia from Mars. First we heard an original vinyl with music from an unknown composer. Lost to time, I'm afraid. All I can say is it's a white label test pressing found in a recycling bin with just the word aftermath written across the label. After that we got the blood pumping with an upbeat tune from Polytet AD and their classic tune, Do You Love Me? Want to keep that blood pumping? Remember, exercise is mandatory. No groans, no bones. And mental exercise is just as important, so get on down to your local rec center for a dose of mentally stimulating team activities and some delicious OMAS. Okay, on to our next caller for the show. Nani reminds us that one person's pleasure is another person's pain, and that we might not all relax in the same way to the same things. I go back in a heartbeat. Tesla City is unbearable. As far as I'm concerned, this promised land is anything but a dictatorship without oxygen. All these daily routines and protocols about everything we take for granted on Earth are so exhausting. Is it safe to take off your hazmat to breathe? Is the water distilled from all our urine really safe? And exactly what behavior will trigger a social credit demotion? Not to mention, every sneeze is suspect. The whole dome has to be sanitized if someone even sniffles. You'd think we figured it out during the pandemic. I know social distancing up here is impossible, but how freaking difficult is it to keep your hands clean and just not sneeze on stuff? Anyway, maybe that's humanity in a nutshell. After all, we walked on the moon before really learning to walk on Earth. I digress. I just want to say that the effort put into maintaining basic life functions in this state-of-the-art society outweighs the benefit of being alive. Use your head, can't you? Use your head. You're on Earth, there's no cure for that. Sam Beckett wrote that in Endgame. We're not cured, regardless of what our de facto overlords claim. It's ironic that the only thing we manage to export culturally onto another planet is a Silicon Valley brand of Protestantism. Sorry for rambling. Anyway, I called into the program to share some Earth sounds I captured. I'm sure listeners of RNFM who suffer from nostalgia like me will appreciate them. In the Meditation Dome, we can listen to the light sounds of the Tuscan country, the olive grove shores of Kefalonia, the blue Danube below the Schwarzwald. I went to the Meditation Dome a few times, but just like yoga, I can't stand it. Simply, I don't miss nature at all. I was never a nature person, never really liked hiking or camping. I miss the city. This whole predicament started because we mixed with wilderness in the first place. This bullshit about mother nature sugarcoated the fact that maybe we were supposed to keep a sharp boundary between ourselves and the wild. And now we're demoted from earthling to miserable Martian status. So at the end of every day, or I mean soul, I escape into texts I brought along. I drink that horrid canteen coffee and listen to urban sounds I recorded 15 years ago, mostly in New York and London. Here are some of my favorite sounds. Here's the sound of my bicycle rolling down the street. And the giggling of my kids in Washington Square as a group of street performers play the boombox and do tricks. A 
kettle going off and the smell of Turkish coffee. And for some reason, I'm obsessed with the sound of the New York MTA.
Your home away from home. Radio Nostalgia from Mars. Now, as much as we appreciate our regular callers, there is one person we would really love to hear from. A man many of us owe our lives to. Our national hero, the Mars mission pilot, who brought us here safely so many years ago. Believe it or not, he finally made it back to Earth. After all these years, his dream finally came true. As we all know, he's had a very difficult time adapting to life here on Mars. We all have, just not in the public eye like him. So Charlie, this is Radio Nostalgia from Mars, personally reaching out to you. Charlie, we'd really appreciate it if you took some time to share a bit of the atmosphere of Earth with us. I'm sure many of our listeners are eager to hear your thoughts on being back. Just speak into the mic in your helmet. A few recorded words. Anything. probably listening now from the rooftop somewhere in Alphaville. So stay tuned to see if he responds. But to be honest, I don't think we'll be hearing from him anytime soon, sadly. Oh well, who can blame him? Let's not spoil his moment any longer. Continue our own trip down memory. Thank you, Mania, for sharing both your thoughts and your favorite sounds with us. That MTA recording actually got me digging into my proverbial record crate because it reminded me of this old track from my DJing days back on Earth called Tokyo 320, a minimal tech house homage to life in the commute and traveling while standing still. Wonderful stuff. Not so wonderful, though, is a space of ecoplastic stockpiling occurring in sectors 7 through 12 after rumors of a pending shortage. Guys, ecoplastic items are freely dispensed at conveniently located kiosks around Tesla City, so there's simply no need to hoard any ecoplastic items. In fact, hoarding them deprives the 3D printers of the recyclable material they need to make them freely available. So your stockpiling is kind of defeating the point of renewable resources. There's a 14 sole grace period to return all parts not in use. No questions asked. Besides, however much you hold on, there's just one thing you can't stockpile. Stockpiled on world, but I cannot. 
There, reminding us that all the good things in the world are no substitute for love. So, if you've recently matched with someone via our repopulation program and you've received a date for your first meetup, don't forget to add it to your mandatory diary. There does seem to be some confusion about scheduling based on the new double month standard, but it's really quite simple, guys. There are now 24 months in our year, and there are two of each month January 1 and January 2. February 1 and February 2, and so on. Each month is now 28 souls long, except for every 6 month, which is 27 souls long. I hope that clears up the situation. Any further queries, in writing please, can be submitted directly to the Mars Coalition for the simplification of the Martian calendar. <laughs> so, from trains and city soundscapes to rhythms born out of hands and feet, water and drums, we continue our journey into the past, into our collective memories of Earth, a celebration of sound as music, music as sound, and voices that carry us into the stars. In that vein, a friendly reminder that silence is deadly. If you hear nothing, please report it. General machine noise means we are being kept alive. Speaking of keeping us alive, two equals one. Duplicates are not spares, people. Everything on Mars is duplicated for security, so please do not cannibalize existing tech. If something breaks, head directly to the spares and parts department in Sector 5 to submit your report and apply for official replacements.
Plaza in the fair. It's time for our last caller. A senior geologist at Tesla University gives us a slightly different perspective on ecology from his research lab at the South Pole. As a geologist, it always annoyed me that the color of Earth conservation was green. Seen from space, the majority of the Earth's surface is blue, with the remaining 29% for land. And of that land, deserts make up one third of the land surface area. Sweeping burns of ochre, rust, and gold. Cream! Give me a break. Anyway, as a lifelong acolyte of sun and sand, I'm not up here pining for jungles and wetlands. I yearn for wheat and log expeditions into the desert, traversing dunes big enough to swallow entire towns in one sideways drift. Oh, to feel that oven hot wind dry as a bone on my face. There's more dust in my veins than water, I can tell you that much. It astonishes me that people up here are oblivious to the fact that it's our understanding of living in deserts that makes life up here on Mars even possible. The early days of Mars habitation experiments took place in the Gobi Desert and in Hawaii on the side of a barren volcano, not in a protected marshland in the Okavango, you get me? What did the last trees of the Black Forest give us except fuel for our final fires? The desert saved us. Oh, I mean, the irony is not lost on me, but no Sahara, no Amazon, no Gobi, no Mars. Where do you think the Amazon Basin was getting all its fertile sand from? Blown over from Africa, that's where. How do we know how to recycle water to near 99% efficiency? The Gobi Desert. There was always so much focus on saving the planet, saving the whales, saving bees, saving the trees. The deserts, am I right? Make them green. I knew it was over when those idiots deliberately tried to flood parts of the Sahara with one species of tree. I mean, come on. A publicity stunt by a French paper manufacturer with deeper pockets. And no one blinked an eye. It was meant to help, but the Sahara tree project literally poured salt into the wound. It started out well enough, but some unknown fungus wiped them all out, but not before they had sucked all the fertile phosphorus out of the sun blowing over the Atlantic effectively salting the Amazon basin like an Italian grandmother making tomato sauce. And then there was no turning back. Deserts are why we exist at all, you know. Now as much as then, so history repeats itself. To paraphrase geologist William Graeber, the ancestors of modern man did not leave the trees, the trees left them. So, are we then the neo-great apes leaving the proverbial trees? The stars, our new savannah? From that perspective, we didn't leave Earth so much as Earth left us. The desert was always one step ahead, and in a way, we started living on Mars before we even left. Ah yes, not all of us up here pine for the fjords. Put me in the desert camp for sure. That searing blue sky and endless horizon. I'm still not used to how close the horizon here is on Mars, and the strange sky still throws me off when I see it, and apparently I'm not the only one. The Recreation and Relaxation Department has asked me to remind those complaining about the red color filter on the windows of the Panorama Observation Deck that the sky on Mars is not blue, but salmon pink. So please bear that in mind when submitting your request to visit the Outer Domes. And also bear in mind that the waiting list is now double months long, so book early for the experience. You're tight beamed to Radio Nostalgia from Mars. Let's take a trip into the desert.
nostalgia for Mars. Well, that brings us towards the end of this particular show. I hope you've enjoyed our rather geological excursion into the past. for allocating us this precious time and their resources on this tight beam to you.
pleasure to share this time with you. We're playing out now with some uplifting and of technology.
we may have traded blue skies for pink, but don't forget we still live and love under the same sun. out there. It's your turn. Fix foot, soul. Have a bit of that old world flavor. You're tuned to Radio Nostalgia from Mars. Breathe easy, kick back, and reminisce. Take my hand, explain in me this project called humanity. Don't let go while hunger's arrive. There will be no surprise all I need. Is that we shouldn't be sad when we think of the wrong? As we trail 
sublime take on our wonderful project called Humanity. Beautiful. Plenty more to come into Soul Show, a show packed with stories and music to remind ourselves of where we are and how far we've come. Our first caller for the show calls it like it is and was a hard-hitting look back at the last days on earth from the perspective of a shrewd businessman and loving father. Stories, memories, the good old days. Original sources, authentic tales, hope, inspiration, drama. Radio nostalgia from Mars. I worked in oil, brokering gasoline to be exact. It's a strange business, uh, probably not like you would actually imagine it to be. My day started something like this. I check Reuters and my sheets. See if there's been a change in the fundamentals. See if the spread's up or down. And then when the clock strikes go, I'm on the phone. I could be calling some commercial shop in Bumble, Kansas, where little old Sue loves to know how my daughter's doing. Or I could be trying to get into the head of a powerful Russian who knows the world wants his phone number. That's when the psychology kicks in, and I go to work. If they pick up the phone, they're mine. That's the game. I started when I was uh, 29, 30. My boss was a coked up, permatanned moron who was wasted by lunch. More money than cents. Screaming at waiters, cause uh, I don't know. You don't drink gin out of a glass like that. And Caesar salad is supposed to have eight pieces, eight pieces of chicken, you stunted fool. Stunted fool was his favorite insult. It's coming from a guy who was five foot and nothing. That was pretty much my life, 24 seven. I traveled a lot. 
meeting clients all over the world. The Amazon, the Gulf, Siberia, Central Asia, the States, Singapore, everywhere. Looking back, I can't claim that I ever would recommend that life, nor can I claim that I was ever really happy doing it. But it was fun. I mean, talk about your share of moments. There was this one girl, some strange mix of Algiers and Paris, with some sprinkle of Havana, a dancer, naturally. So pretty. She'd turn a priest's head or give a nod of Sometimes I wonder what happened to her. But we all had the same feeling. This can't last. And sure enough, we were right. First, you couldn't drink the water. Then you couldn't eat the crops. And pretty soon, we wouldn't be able to breathe the air. I remember looking at Emmy and wondering what kind of a future would she have. So I decided to do something about it. The Mars project was plan B for planet Earth, which was most evidently f The family and I had already put down roots in Tesla City by the time the great catastrophe really hit. The corporation knew my contacts in the world of drilling and refining would be useful. So I adapted my skills to something more practical. Now we are all that keeps this little planet running. Mining those Martian chemicals for the battery banks. Martian cement for the buildings. My pure little Emma has a future. When somebody sits down and writes this all up for the history books, it might just be men like me they'll be hailing as heroes. It's men like me who saved humanity. Men like me who took us further than we ever dreamt possible. Radio nostalgia from Mars. Oh, some pretty heavy stuff. Reminds us that all kinds made it up here to Mars, but we're all in it together now and remain creatures of the world. You're a tight beam to Radio Nostalgia from Mars. Music for the lost days of Earth.
of the world now that the tractor takes us back Stefan Milenkovic pining for blue skies whilst musing on the games we play just a reminder that until further notice there is a moratorium on all team leaders playing card and board games with their teams following an incident over a game of Monopoly in section C all senior section team leaders will convene for emergency counseling and anger management courses until then, there will be no intersectional board game tournaments and no games with groups larger than four people at a time per team. In the interim, teams are encouraged to take advantage of the half ration special on OMAS. the edge of, of everything. Our next caller, Yamil, takes us into her world of food, smells, sensuality, blue skies, and sings us a personal song to remember. Histoire, mémoire, le bon vieux temps, source originale, fable authentique, espoir, inspiration, drame, musique, radio nostalgie, de Mars. I have nightmares. I'm happy to be alive, but I knew many who deserved to live more than I did. But this is a radio program about nostalgia, not guilt. <laughs>